What is up, baddies, fatties, and sickly daddies? Thanks for sitting down at the messy desk with me today. Today, I'm doing something a little unexpected. I'm following through on something I've said previously. I said multiple times in past videos that I would make a template from scratch, a template project here on the Octatrack, um, and I would do it from scratch on camera so you could watch me and just kind of watch the inner workings of my mind, which honestly uh, is fascinates scientists to no end. They wonder, why does it work the way it does? How does it cause his beard to only grow this way and never this way? Uh, yeah, it's a brain power thing, by the way. I don't know if you know that. Um, and yeah, we're just going to make a template, <coughs> a template project because I need to do that. Mine is like three years old at this point. And every time I open it, I have to change a bunch of stuff and it annoys me. And I should have just done this uh, years ago. Uh, but you know me, I'm lazy. I'm tired. I've been sick for like a month um, and it's not COVID. So I don't even get the cool stuff like getting to have my family home with me. I'm just normal sick, boring sick. No one wants to hear about the boring sick. Oh, you just have a cold. Oh, well, at least it's not COVID. Yeah, well, um, my throat hurts, you know? Anyway, I'm going to do that now. Um, and I'm just kind of going to talk through some thoughts and why I'm doing certain things and probably forget to do a bunch of stuff. And uh, maybe I'll do a follow-up video where I iterate on this a little bit. But for now, let's make a new project. I think it's smart to name your template projects, something that's either going to be at the top of your project list or something that's either going to be at the bottom. So I can name it like Z and it'll always be at the bottom in theory. Um, I could name it something like one and the theory is that it'll always be on top. Um, I am going to do none of those things and I'm just going to call it again. Whoop. Yep. Fuck it, we're leaving it in. Ag pain. Now that is an unintentionally perfect way to encapsulate the last few uh, weeks slash month of my life. I'm very tired. Did you miss me? I've been coughing a whole lot. I kept telling myself every week I'm going to make a new video. And then I would sit down to make the video and I would go, I don't feel so good. And I'd cough a whole bunch. And, and now here I am. So I hope you missed me. Hope you're stoked I'm here. I'm stoked I'm here and I'm stoked you're here. Let's make a template project. Um, now, I'm gonna start doing some things kind of quickly. Um, the first thing I'm gonna do is change all my tracks to flex machines uh, because I like to use flex machines. I am not smart enough to really understand the huge difference between them and static machines in terms of like just normal sample playback and stuff. Uh, but the big difference that I am aware of is that if you look here in a static machine, this is the top of your sample slots. If you move over and switch it to a flex and you look at the same thing, voila, you have access to the recording buffers as a man who likes to sample from time to time. This is important to me. So I'm going to set everything to a flex machine. Uh, and while I'm doing that, I'm just going to quickly go through and explain to you what a template file is if you don't know um so a template project i went i did it too fast so i actually i lied to you just then i'm going to explain it to you now <coughs> can you hear the congestion um i'm going to make a master track real quick um the way you do that is go to project uh control audio track eight master bam okay all flex machines in a master that's the basic start for me. So if you don't know, a template project on the Octatrack in the in the uh, context of the Octatrack is a project that you will always keep blank, that you can load up every time you turn on your Octatrack so that you don't have to start from scratch and do what I just did every single time where where you have to make all those flex machines, put all the effects on them that you want, because I don't want to filter and a delay on everything. Uh, that's boring. I do want to filter on most things, but um, you know, you can add scenes. Anyway, the point is you can add as much stuff as you want because it, for all intents and purposes, it is just an Octatrack project. And then every time you sit down to work on a project, you just load this project up. Um, if there is something existing there, you can just reload to the last save state, which will be a complete blank slate. And when I say blank slate, I don't mean uh, a blank project, I mean, it'll be the last save state, which for you will be this point, right? Whatever you end up saving your template as, it'll revert back to that point. And that's super useful. So the Octatrack is a machine that takes a lot of time 
in general and asks a lot of you. So using something like a template to kind of get a leg up on that and not be so miserably beholden to, you know, clicking buttons and moving arrows and clicking buttons and moving arrows and holding buttons and clicking buttons. It's all very hard and, and it's a hard life we choose for ourselves. So let's make it a little easier. Um, okay. So I have seven flex machines and a master track. That's the basic thing for me. I like to keep a filter on most things. Um, I know that for myself, I like a reverb and I do keep a delay on track one and two um, reverb for the main sample delay for the kind of spacey second layer sample that I almost always use on track three. I know I'm probably going to be using a kick drum, so I don't really want to delay. Um, in some instances, I do want to filter, so I'm just going to keep the filter there. But what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to put a lo fi before it and then a filter so I can kind of dirty up the kick and then clean it with a filter, something I like to do. Same thing for track four, it's a snare, so probably won't need a delay unless I want to do something specific, but if I get to that point, I can just change it. Same thing, I, I do want a filter, and I probably want a lo-fi. Um, for the snare, though, I think I'm going to put the lo-fi after the filter, because uh, for a snare, I'm mostly going to be cleaning up low end, and then I think I want to keep that kind of high end crunch. Five through seven are complete wild card tracks for me. Um, five, I guess, ends up being a base more often than not. So like, let's let's plan around that. Let's plan track five is going to be where I put my base most of the time. Um, and if that's the case, I do want to filter. Um, and I also want, I mean, gosh, guys, it's probably going to be another lo-fi, huh? Probably has to be another lo-fi, doesn't it? And it, it will be. Um, I love the lo-fi. It's one of the only effects on the Octa track that is a pleasure to work with. Um, so yeah, I mean, fucking sue me. You can't. They'll laugh you out of court. You're suing a man for using too much of an effect. I, you should be suing every FL Studio user for using Sound Goodizer too much. Get out of my courtroom. Okay, track six and track seven. I don't I have no fucking clue what I'm going to put here. So I don't know what to do here, really. Um, I guess let's say track six would be a hi-hat. Um, I do want to filter for the hi-hat. Um, <clears throat> comb filter would be cool. A uh, really easy trick to load up a hi-hat, put just a little bit of comb filter on that. You can get some interesting textures. Um, <clears throat> seven, yeah, that's the that's the wild card, baby, the who knows. Y'all see that? Um, so yeah, I don't know. Comment down below what effect I should put here. Let's do something weird. Let's do like a, a chorus and... Uh, another comb filter and this will be like the weird shit sample place this is the weird shit sample place which is also kind of an apt name for my channel i love it um i almost never work in 120 i'm gonna set it to like 137 that sounds sick and cool and smart to me um for my master filter and probably lo-fi you had to know that was going to be the case um i use those the most and so that makes sense doesn't it Boy, I'm really firing on all cylinders after not making a video for some number of weeks. Uh, how are you all doing, by the way? You guys made it okay without me? I'd say that I missed you, but I've kind of just been delirious for the past three weeks, laying in bed, staring at the ceiling, wondering why God chose me to fight his toughest battles. It's, it's not been easy, but I'm back. Um, yeah, okay, so this state currently is pretty much where my old template is. Just flex machines, the right effects on them, and that's it. Um, I have some scenes also, which I'll make very quickly. Um, this is something I'm going to have to do kind of quick and dirty, because uh, it's something that is going to be adjusted for every track anyway. Um, so what I'm going to do is go to scene 13, and 13 is going to be a high pass filter on the master. So I'm just going to turn the bass up to here-ish. Um, maybe turn up a little bit of Q. I'm not going to worry about it too much. Um, I'm not going to put any lo-fi on that. Scene 14, it's going to be a low-pass filter. So I'm just going to pull it back to uh, about there. Um, and the reason I'm not even listening to anything while I do this, I hate this microphone so much. It sounds better than the SM7B, but it's not meant to be on one of these things. I don't know what it's meant to be on, but it always do the swibble swabble, and it makes me want to kibble cobble myself. Um, the reason I'm not even really like listening to anything while I do this is that 
every track is going to call for something a little bit different when it comes to a high pass and a low pass filter. So, you know, if I load up some stuff into this and I find that, okay, these are just straight up unusable, I can edit the template. Um, but for the most part, I'm going to be adjusting these a little bit anyway. So I'm just not going to worry about it too much. Um, effect two, some lo-fi, similar thing. <coughs> On 15, I'm going to put a little bit of sample reduction, maybe kind of a lot, like that much. Um, and then on Trav scene 16, I'm going to put a lot of sample reduction and a bit of bit reduction. Um, and that's going to be kind of a crunch it up, mess it up little scene there. And that's great. So now that I have all these things, I have the tracks, machine types, the master, the effects on those machines, some basic scenes. I'm going to do some more kind of granular stuff. Um, one thing I'm going to do is make my life a little bit easier is make everything actually wait let me interrupt myself here i'm gonna go to pattern settings hitting function and pattern turn the scale to per track and that allows you to change the length of tracks and the speed of the sequencer on those tracks per track which is insanely helpful um the annoying thing is that it does reset everything back to 16 that's why i interrupted myself there so i didn't make everything four pages only to have it go back to one page that wouldn't be very riveting content now would it um so let's bounce up to 64 here and just do this a number of times and feel great about our lives. Um, another important thing I'm going to do is bounce the master sequencer length, not up to 64, but up to 128. And the reason for this is that on numerous tracks, um, certainly track one and two, I'm going to put them to half speed. And I'll probably do the same with the snare. And I'll probably do the same with the bass. Um, and then the other ones I'll just leave. Um, and the reason I'm doing this is for things where I don't feel like I need 16th note resolution a lot, uh, which for me is sample slices, like sample chops, um, drums a lot of the time, you know, if I need to do retriggering, that's in the source menu, I can I can do that there. Um, moving the sequencer to half speed like that gives you essentially eight bars without having to use trigger conditions. So then when you do start using trigger conditions, you have 12 bars, 16 bars and, and on and on. So super helpful there. Um, I guess I should address something before I, you know, move on and finish up or finish the video or whatever, which is that I'm not going to load any samples. Um, kind of controversial, maybe. I think a lot of people, when they think about templates, think about loading up samples, so you're just ready to go. Um, I don't like to, because what it ends up with me doing is using the same exact samples over and over again, and that's not really what I want. Um, I want to try to push myself to try new samples or at least new combinations of samples, I think is an important thing because I do use the same samples a lot. Um, I would say the one exception to this, and I will load it just to be funny, um, is I'm going to load this base. I never remember is triangle or saw the one that's less buzzy triangle is the one that's less buzzy. <clears throat> I am going to load this because I always use this base or an 808. Um, so I'll just have that there. Um, but yeah, past that, I want to kind of give myself the freedom to just go in and, and pick what samples I need. Um, past that, I am going to do a little bit of fiddling with an LFO here. I'm going to set it to amp hold, uh, and then I'm going to put the speed 16, I'm gonna put it per trigger, put this to random. I think I'm doing this right. I'll go back and fix it if I didn't. Um, and essentially what this is going to do is give me just a little bit of modulation on the hi-hat uh, release time. Um, I guess here I should pull this down a little bit and pull this down a bit. Um, and again, this is something that I'm going to tweak once I actually load some stuff in here and, and I'll, I'll go back and figure it out. It's the, it's the concepts that I think is the most important. Um, you can mess with it as you need to. Now let's think, what else do we need to do? What we need to do is set up recording buffers because sampling is important. So I'm going to go to track one, go to the recording buffer. I always sample into AB, but I'll just turn them on anyway. I like one, two, source three main. That's fine. Recording length max. That's fine. Loop off two, a little bit of fade in, a little bit of fade out. Quantize recording to pattern length. Don't want to quantize playback. Uh, and then we're just going to do that for every single one. So I'm um, probably going to fast forward this part, but Mm, you know, them's the breaks. And uh, yeah, let's do it. Okay, 
So I went ahead and finished doing that, and I decided to stop doing the fade in and fade out, because who cares, man? It's not that important. <clears throat> it don't matter that much. Um, so now, in an ideal situation, I can just hit record one or record two or whatever I need to on any track, and it'll just sample and be great, and I don't really need to worry about it. Um, just doing that amount of setup makes sampling on the aux track easier than sampling on the Digidact, uh, which is funny because it's such a common complaint that sampling on the aux track is so convoluted and hard. It is to learn, and that's for sure. I have a 35-minute video uh, explaining, I still don't know which way to point, uh, how hard it is and how not hard, but convoluted and, and, and big the setup can be. Um, but yeah, so that's super helpful and useful for me. Um, something else I'm going to do is put the direct monitoring of AB up. Um, and that's because when I'm sampling, I'm going to plug stuff in here. I want to be able to hear it. Um, past that, there's not that much more I want to do currently. Um, if I want to go more in depth, if you want to go more in depth, you could set up MIDI stuff. You could change parts and set up separate parts with different effects and stuff. Um, the reason I'm not doing that is the way that I compose on the arch track is I'm going to build up a set of samples and effects and scenes that are using those samples and effects in mind. Um, and then I'm just going to copy part one and paste it on part two and change what I need to and go from there. So if I have a pre-existing setup on part two, I can't really do that. And it gets really complicated and weird. Um, so that's why I don't do that. Um, you could certainly get more uh, in depth with LFOs. Like I could maybe make an LFO, um, like a defaulted LFO thinking about uh, the filter or the reverb on this. Um, I could work on you know amp envelopes to have things a certain way. I could automatically pitch down my samples um, because I know that I'm going to do that anyway. You know, There's a lot of more things I could do. But for now, I think this is fine. I think this is worth just leaving as it is um, because it, it's tempting to do too much with a template. Um, but I think leaving things as a bare minimum, this is what you want to turn on your Octatrack to is great. Um, and actually, on that note, I'm going to do one more thing, which is turn the metronome on um, and turn it up to, oh, I never fucking remember. Pre-roll, yes. And I'm going to turn it up to 32 or whatever. It's not an exact thing. Um, and so now, you know, when I hit record, the metronome will be on. And that's useful for me, who has no inherent sense of rhythm. So there you go. That's a template right there. What I'm going to do now is save it. Go here. I'm going to hit save. Ag pain is being saved. Now, here's the thing. The Octatrack is actually really nice about saving. People like to talk about how mean it is, but it's really only mean with recording buffers. So it's kind of funny how much it gets gussied up about, you know, oh, the Octatrack is brutal. It'll lose you all your stuff. I mean, only if you don't save your samples. Everything else, like if I make a change here, and I turn off the Octatrack, whoops, and I turn it back on, those changes are still going to be there. It's saving constantly to, I don't even really know what you'd call it. It's not like a temporary buffer. It's just like, I don't know. It's crazy. But there it is. And if I make a slight change here, it'll be there. Um, so that's great. But, but one thing that is a problem with that is <clears throat> you need to put stuff on this file to make it work, right? To make it a song and not just a blank project file. So when you bring this file back, when you load this project again, all your stuff is going to be here. So what do you do? Well, there's two schools of thought. One is that you open your template and then immediately you go to your project and go to save to new to open a new project um, with this exact settings and you can name it whatever. Um, I don't prefer to do that because I like to <laughs> name my projects with something about them in mind, and I won't know what to name them if there's nothing existing in them yet. So what I do is the little more dangerous way of hitting save to new after I'm done with my project, after I've finished, you know, doing whatever it is that I want to do, you know, starting it out, basically, um, save it to a new project, and then you can come back to here and just hit reload, and it'll reload it back to its original saved state that you have left it in. So the really important thing is to just never hit function save, because then you will overwrite your template with all the samples and changes you've made. And that sucks. I've done that before. Sorry. And it's not great. So be careful of that. And past that, that's kind of it. I'm sort of easing back into making videos. It's been a few weeks. I always feel like I forget how to do these things or like I'm not going to remember how to edit or that people have just forgotten about me. I hope not. I hope that this is something that's useful. I will put up this 
project file on my Patreon. If people want it, they can have it. It's not exactly rocket science to recreate it just watching this video, but if you're as lazy as me, maybe you just want to take it and put it on your machine. No questions asked. Um, yeah. Other than that, um, if you've reached out to me for lessons, I have emailed you back. Uh, I do want to do lessons with you. I'm sorry that it's taken me so long to get back to you. I'm sweating like a pig. It's 85 degrees in April. It's not even April yet. It's 85 degrees in March, and I've been sick for 8,000 years. Uh, but I have reached out to you, and I, I do very much look forward to talking to some of you if you, if you get back to me. Um, if anybody has any questions about uh, anything at all, comment down below and fucking engage with my content, okay? Um, uh, past that, I love you. And I love these little toys that I've been painting. Um, you know, <coughs> I did a stream painting the other day. Uh, having a lot of fun with that. Spending a lot of money on that. Uh, so go to my Patreon and give me money for toys, please. I they used to buy toys for my kids. Now I'm buying toys for me. And we just love that. And we got dogs over here. Uh, you can't see Frank. He's not in Frank. Let me pull you down here. There they are, just sleeping. The two good boys. Peeing and pooping all the time. Anyway, my name's Daniel. This is The Messy Desk, and I love you more than I love spending an exorbitant amount on plastic that is very hard to assemble and even harder to paint. Hope I like the game. I've only played it once. I'll see you next week.